Flynn, you previously directed Metalhead yes. from Black Mirror. That was such a specific episode in terms of its vision. Why were you the right choice for Bandersnatch? I have no idea why I was the right choice. And they said, oh, it's an interactive piece. And I said, oh, no, do that. Why would you want to interact with television? And um, they said, ah, exactly what we thought, but we have this idea. And then when they told me what the idea was, I just said, oh, I have to do that. And I spent about a year working on it. It was in London for five months. Uh, so I don't know why I was the choice, but that's how I got there. And now that you've done it, uh, what would you like to Hello. see the next person who does Alrighty. interactive TV films? Thank you. They'll probably be differently. Hi. I'd like to see David Oh, of course. I'd like to see what David Lynch does with it. Or, or Panos Komosos, you know, the guy who did Mandy? Okay. I'd like to see Panos do it. Panos would be that would be awesome. All right, and how did you guide the actors differently? Uh, it's interesting because the script we had had a, um, you had to explain, well, there's parallel realities. And, you know, and then you had to try to figure out, well, what would that be like? So that the actor can access the emotions and so, you know, you, you, you're trying to figure out what that backstory would be and the stuff the directors usually do in helping the actors get in place. And I think I remember saying that it was kind of like um, having some deja vu but not quite knowing and having memories but not really, but knowing what they are but not knowing why you have them so that they you recognize odd to you, bits and pieces in the past. And so that was a big thing because, you know, we would do the same scene three times. But it wouldn't just be like that. We would have to redo it each time, and, and the actors needed to know well, like, why, what's different this time. So it was a lot of preparation. It was a hell of a lot of preparation. Um, I'd be doing two to three hours of preparation every night before the shoot. Are there any scenes that uh, people have not really found, or scenes that you're surprised that people are finding so often? I think that everybody's found everything. Um, there is a scene which you can't access, although I just heard from the Russell McLean, and someone managed to download it somehow from somewhere. We don't know how they have. Uh, so there isn't a scene that we actually originally had in uh, that we you can't access anymore because we changed the edit. We were cutting it, things, some things become redundant. So but we liked it, so we finished it. Uh, but I think everyone's found pretty much everything that's there uh, by just doing it for hours and hours and hours and hours. There are a couple scenes that we didn't use. timeline, um, two characters die extra times in two other timelines that are no longer in the film because of the way uh, the butterfly effect goes the people work. But you change the edit and they disappear. So, but we shot them. They were great. <laughs> and they were two characters. The characters was, they were both characters that do die. They just died more abruptly uh, in a different place. Uh, so it was Colin Ripley. And to see Shadri's character, um, Tucker. They both died horribly in other scenes. That we, that we, they just became redundant. But they were great fun to shoot. Alright, and uh, finally I'll ask you, uh, why not return to American Gods for season two, which is coming up now? Oh, good question. Uh, they didn't ask me. Uh, I'm a producer on it. They were. I was also very busy, and I was not uh, available. <coughs> but yeah, uh, I was. You know, I came in at the beginning. I, I just saw the payment actually very recently and it was very friendly and uh, we, we hung out for a little while. Uh, but um, but yeah, uh, the showrunners, Brian Fuller and Michael Green, I was with those guys and they were quite so, you know, it's a whole other thing now. Sure. But good luck to them. Alright, well, thanks very much, David. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was the most complicated sound mix we've ever done, I think. This particular scene? The, the whole, the whole, whole thing. thing. Well, you to mix, you to mix every transition. Oh yeah. I mean, David, for you, when you look, I mean, just using this this particular segment as one example, how how would you work with the editors, or how would how would the technology work with the editors to be able? Because I mean, there is you can get lost in this as clear, you, as you're looking at that wall in, in Stefan's room. I think it's worth going back a little bit and just talking about the fact that it worked as a script. That was the most important thing. In fact, if I gave advice to anybody doing this again, it would be make sure it works as a script. It has to work on paper. First time we had it, it was a, a screenplay this thick. On paper, pages. it was like 160 pages or something, 150 something.
157 pages. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, if you're directing that script, which I was, you, got, you can't just skip through it. Well, things you can't yeah. do, you can't skip through it. You can't go linear through it either, because that doesn't work at all. And you're preparing everything. Mm -hmm. So when you get to choice, you make the choice. And you then make all the choices. Not a trillion of them, but you know, a lot of them, and you have to figure it out. So how would you and your creative process do that? Because a, a, a standard, say, 90-page script, it's, you know, take a look at the beginning, take a look at the end, figure out how it's working inside, and, and then you, you do the job, you find out what the story is and how you want to tell it. This, di all different. Yeah, I, I'm going to quote Charlie Brooker and, and, and say it's kind of like doing a Rubik's Cube with your head. You know, uh, I don't want to do that. That hurts. Guys were great, and some of you sent sending in questions to us when you were coming in, and we really appreciate it. You may or may not realize we actually asked a lot of them, but there was one we didn't have a chance to ask, and it's from Michael. I don't know if Michael's still here, but hopefully Michael tops up to you. Um, and 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 you kind of uh, kind of infers to this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this to you, and then whoever wants to jump in. This is gonna be our last person of the evening. Thank you so much for joining us. By the way, we had a great time. I hope you guys did too. Thank you. Is there any truth? in wanting to add new scenes and new endings over time, so that if I play Bandersnatch a year from now, I may discover something that wasn't available before. Bingo! Uh, maybe. No, uh, no. no, as of now, there are no plans, but in Black Mirror World, never say never. So. What do you guys think of that? Uh, so Spin the wheel? So oh, you don't want to go back, you don't want to open it back. <laughs> It's so like we talked about it a lot about like not having children. If you, if you if you have children, it's like like after we finished it and while we're doing it, we're just like no, never again. It's the like hardest thing. Yeah. It's and I still say this day. It's the hardest thing I've ever been involved in in terms of the process. I mean, gratifying, wonderful. But the other thing about it is, I had an amazing crew, an amazing producer, had amazing writers. I had amazing DOPs. I had an amazing first AD, amazing script supervisor, all the way down, amazing editor, colorist. I had a really top team, and we were only just making it every day, right? In terms of this, I know it's hard. It is really, really, really hard. But I think you can see from the response that the, that the movie has gotten is that people want more. So there's something coming. We hope to see what it is. We're glad that you guys came. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, the creators behind Thank you so much. Have a great weekend.